Well, I have to admit that my semantics career is very young. I really just started with EK, um, working, starting to work here in um, October of 2022, right? Uh, before that, I was doing data management, but not necessarily semantics. And because of that experience, the transition wasn't too bad, right? Because I was doing um, large scale content and metadata extraction and then using all of that to power discovery. The big difference is I was powering discovery using strings and not things like we say it in the semantics world. Um, I have to say I was very lucky that right after I started, EK started a um, knowledge graph advisory work um, and I was uh, put on that project and there uh, we had about six or seven vendors Right, um, graph vendors. They um, they were part of that uh, uh, that that they had to build um, a graph POC uh, using the organization's uh, data uh, sources and an ontology they provided. Right, so um, uh, so I got to um, see firsthand like the different approaches that could be leveraged to um, essentially find evidence for the ontology. In, in your uh, in a corpus, right? Like from deterministic approaches, like uh, pattern matching, basically, basically, to all the way to use of uh, advanced AI ML processes to do knowledge extraction, and then uh, building out the graph, and ultimately uh, consuming that graph in different ways, um, and even doing uh, advanced analytics on that. So I was very uh, fortunate to see all the components of the semantic layer being used. Uh, you know, some vendors leverage taxonomy, some vendors um, use, like I said, uh, just uh, ML to do knowledge extraction, but uh, ultimately everyone had the graph and, and different ways of consuming it. So I got to experience it all. It was, it was um, like drinking from the fire hose, <laughs> but uh, I had to do a lot of uh, reading um, and getting up to speed on my own, but it was uh, the fastest way to come up to speed and in the space. So while I have to say that, um, you know, with the explosion of Gen AI apps, right, the uh, graphs are really good at uh, managing hallucinations <laughs> in the Gen AI apps, which is why I guess um, Gartner put it in their um, sort of um, called it out as a key component in their uh, impact radar for Gen AI op um, applications. But the um, but from my experience at EK, what I think um, I have seen the most impact is really semantic search, right? Because, uh, um, uh, you know, realistically speaking, we are all looking for information all, all day long, right? We uh, read, we consume more than we create. Um, and with 20 years of Google experience, everyone ex uh, ex sort of expects that from any system they um, interact with today, right? The Google like knowledge panels, the um, searching on things versus strings, right? All of that experience, they, they sort of like exp uh, expect that consumer grade search experience in any application. And in my mind, um, the semantic layer is, is a great framework to provide that capability. And I have uh, seen that team successfully at organizations, both large and small, at EK. Well, it's always boils down to the use case, right? The, you have to have a good uh, problem that only a semantic layer can solve before you try and just use semantic layer for the sake of using it, right? So what I mean by that, before EK, I was mostly working in sort of the applications where I'm managing um, a state, right? Like say a record management system where I have to manage the state of a record from when it's created to when it's uh, disposed or archived or or sent to the National Archives or whatnot, right? Or uh, so that uh, to, me, um, to handle that kind of state change, 
a relational database is just fine, right? Uh, versus when you're trying to do large scale business analytics by bringing together disparate data sources like, um, you know, sales and products and uh, customer or whatnot, right? Before that, we have very powerful um, data management platforms today, right? Like the lake house architecture that Databricks and Snow, uh, Snowflake all support uh, out of the box. Um, in my mind, the a semantic layer is useful when you need to have business context, um, right? From uh, So uh, recently I was on a data management project where uh, the customer um, had a lot of data products available in the data management platform, but the data engineers could not find um, anything they were looking for, right? Because um, it's just, um, uh, they were supposed to do self-service analytics, but they, um, they can't um, find what has already been published, right? And as a result, didn't know, and even if they find something, they didn't have sufficient information, sufficient context to figure out if this is, um, if this is good and I have, like, can I just use it out of the box or not, right? Without talking to someone else. And uh, so when we came in, we determined that in order to solve this problem, right, you really just need a good taxonomy to standardize the metadata that can be associated with the, these data products. Um, a, a business glossary to um, essentially have a shared understanding of all the terms in, in this taxonomy, right, across enterprise as well as a catalog to power discovery of all these data products, right, where all the metadata associated with these data products can be indexed and searched upon and accessed or whatnot, right? So you can see that we are picking and choosing um, some of whatever components we need from the semantic layer without trying to use it all. Right, but uh, ultimately they also had a use case whereby um, I can um, now I can find uh, the data products I'm looking for, but um, you know in the end that these data products are not exactly what not an exact match, right? So then uh, they wanted us to recommend similar products, and that's a like a classic uh, graph use case, right? So at that point, bringing in a graph makes sense because um, you could uh, really power a content recommender and we have built a uh, similar, uh, we have uh, essentially implemented similar use cases for other clients um, using a graph. So it's really, it's essentially the short answer is, it depends, it depends on the use case. <laughs> So in my experience, the biggest challenge I have encountered is with knowledge extraction, right? So um, sometimes some of the projects I work on, um, the, the data sources that we're using to build a semantic layer, they're all nice structured relational sources. And it works out uh, because then you have a standard way of bringing that um, information in the semantic layer, into the semantic layer, right? So for um, depending on the database engine they, they may be using, with, if it's GraphDB, then you have OntoRefine, if it's Turtle, um, I've used SMS2 mapping in the past. There's also a vendor agnostic um, uh, language called Artwell to to support that. But the, really the big challenge is when you have unstructured um, sources, right? Like which um, there's like, okay, this is my corpus go build, and this is my ontology, go build me a graph now, right? And that's a really hard problem because, um, well, first of all, we haven't uh, validated whether you have evidence of that ontology in, in, the, in the data they provided, right? And then if, uh, assuming that that is true, right? There is like the ontology, the, the data they provided does correspond to the ontology they're thinking of, right? And at that point, you have to somehow extract the um, entities and relationships from that data and then push it to the semantic layer. And um, so in the past, we have used, uh, you know, deterministic pattern matching, um, taxonomy uh, based um, classification, doing named entity recognition. Uh, more recently, we have started using the foundational models, right, to really find evidence uh, for that ontology in the data. But um, um, I would say it's, it's, it really depends. You have to try bunch of different things and also align with what the, what the infrastructure they already have in, in house this organization along with their uh, comfort level with a specific approach versus another. Well, I try and assure 
them that, you know, it's not too bad, first and uh, foremost, right? Because um, especially if uh, most people, most tech folks, they uh, they already know SQL, right? And and I try and assure that the jump from SQL to Sparkle is, is not that huge. And um, same goes for data modeling, right? The jump from entity relationship diagrams to a conceptual model for an ontology is, is not too bad, right? Um, so it's, it's um, of course, it helps to have um, some formal training so that um, you can you can speak the language, right? And that's what I did uh, after I started UK. I leveraged the, um, the ontology training we had available in our internet to sort of like come up to speed on all the lingo, right? Like what's, what is an annotation property? What, what does inference means, right? Um, Etc. I do have, um, I have seen logic back in school, so it wasn't too bad, right? But um, I, I, um, I hear people when they get concerned about um, the big skill set gap. And um, actually that, that training that we're talking about, we make that available externally as, um, as, as a service known as Knowledge Grab University. So I would definitely encourage people to check that out. But um, in the end, it's, it's really, you can, you can really leverage um, transfer learning, knowing what you know, and then kind of learning, filling in the gaps. And um, again, so that's kind of like on the model side. On the implementation side, a lot of the ETL skills definitely transfer, right? Like the, the for the data extraction part or the data data source integration part, all of the existing um, existing techniques the organization may be applying, all that holds. Even for the transformation piece, um, you know, the, the existing approaches for data wrangling, um, data enrichment, all of that applies. Just the load part would, dip, uh, would differ from, say, when you're loading into a data warehouse versus a graph, right? And also depending on whether it's an RPG versus a label property graph. But um, that's really the, the delta. So... Based on my experience, um, I have seen a huge uptick in, um, you know, trying to incorporate semantics in, uh, into their Indian organization's data management platform, right? So most large organizations, they have already aggregated their um, enterprise data into, say, uh, a Databricks or a Snowflake or a Cloud Data Data platform or whatnot. But um, just because the data is all co-located, it's not really helping them realize their very lofty goal of data de democratization. So essentially, uh, they really want uh, to make all of this data available for everyone in the uh, organization um, who has uh, put the right access, right? Use the data to power self-service analytics, right? But because the business context is missing in the sense that, um, you know, someone, they have a, uh, I don't know, enterprise data explorer, they come in and, uh, uh, come, uh, you know, hit a particular data set and they're trying to figure out um, whether this data would um, uh, help them do some sort of analytics, they need to have that context. Well, what is this data for? What is this data about? Where did this data come from? What is this data being used? They don't have that business context, right? And the semantic layer is really good um, in terms of kind of driving that intelligence into the um, um, into your data. Right, so we've seen a huge uptick of um, so solicitations, not just in the commercial space and in the um, federal RFP uh, as well, the um, trying to incorporate semantics into large scale data management in the organization. Well, just uh, I have to say Nike style, just do it. <laughs> um, because um, you know, like the, uh, there, there is no doubt in anyone's mind that data is a first class citizen now, right? The, for, uh, with high likelihood, most uh, data is going, uh, most data is going to outlive the application that generated it, right? Especially assuming that the business process remains in place, which means that that's why uh, all these organizations kind of piggybacking on my, the answer to the, uh, the previous question, Right. The, um, that's why they're trying to work on these large scale, uh, efficient and uh, effective data management practices across the whole organization. 
right? And so, and the data architects have a big role to play in, in realizing that role, right, of data democratization they have to build a design for that um, data management platform. And um, so, so as a result, um, because like I said, in the previous answer, semantic layer is so good um, at, um, at uh, incorporating that intelligence into that data, right? So they, they really need to kind of embrace that in, so that they can um, really try and see how we can have a data-centric view of the world, right? Like and not an application-centric view of the world because like I said, the application, the data is going to outlive the application. And um, so, so like I said, just... Um, we just have to start working on it. And, but my only advice would be to start small, start with, um, you know, a well-scoped, um, problem, uh, maybe a very small ontology with a handful of classes and a couple of data sources to really uh, build out the foundation, right? Whether it's through, uh, deterministic, depending on the type of data source, if it's unstructured, whether we can leverage, um, deterministic, uh, pattern matching or, um, even leverage the, the, you know, the most advanced AI models that are available today to kind of do a quick POC and build buy-in, right? Before trying like uh, really expand the um, uh, to additional uh, data sources or use cases or whatnot. Another advice I would have um, really that uh, leverage what you have in-house, right? Because it's especially large organizations you can get uh, bogged down in this very like the security review process. So before for quick POCs to get buy-in, just leverage uh, whatever airport, um, and um, you know you may have in-house or database or whatnot. Um, that way you can quickly turn around the POC, um, get validate, uh, get real uh, good feedback, and then move on to the the next steps. But then again, if you're using AI. And if you're taking this to operations, know that garbage in, garbage out still holds today, which means you have to have human in the loop um, to really have quality data in the semantic layer.